Okay, so this is a four switch Atari 2600, and I've removed the RF shield to access this stuff in here. And I need to remove a few components because what I need to do, since this RF modulator has failed to operate correctly, I need to remove that and remove a transistor here and then hook up some wires and adjust the impedance so I can use it with component wires or composite wires rather so the standard uh, yellow white red configuration white and red being the audio and yellow being the video alright so I removed the RF modulator so now I have access to these five pins here the only three I'm using are for ground VCC and the video signal. Now over here is where I got my audio signal. It's attached to this resistor here, so the fourth component in from the right here. So it's attached right there. And so far it looks okay. It's not great, but at least it's promising. Okay. So eventually the signal degrades and there's large lines, yep, right there, and everything else starts going to crap, and it uh, has this constant distortion right here. So I think there's something wrong with the amplitude of the signal. So, yeah, I'm going to have to keep tweaking the transistor's bias point and everything else. But the audio's coming in pretty well. It turns out it doesn't have anything to do with the signal amplitude. It has to do with something else going on in the circuit here. And I noticed that the sync pulse actually ceases to pulse from time to time, and that causes the video not to sync properly. So all it is is a bunch of uh, randomly firing horizontal lines. So that's the issue. Now I've replaced uh, the power capacitor here, so there's probably another component in here that's failed which I'll have to determine later, but for now I just grabbed the 6 switch Atari this one over here and I performed the same operation, so I removed the RF modulator and I tapped into the audio, that's what this orange wire here is for so I've tapped into the audio and I've amplified the signal using two resistors and a transistor and here's the signal. All right, and here's Yara's Revenge. And this is just to show you the quality of the video. Not my gaming skills, obviously. So the video quality is pretty good. And the audio is decent. That sound is part of the game. It's meant to resemble a beehive, I believe. So if I have to reset, that buzzing goes away. So that's part of the atmosphere of the game. So the next step is to place this transistor and these resistors onto a perf board and then solder it in place somewhere within this case here and then get some jacks on the output. Two for audio, one for video, so I can connect it to a modern television. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Alright, so I finished soldering up my perf board circuit here. So I have the transistor, two resistors, and I added a capacitor to the audio because I noticed there was a pop when I turned on or off the audio. So I didn't want that DC level to possibly damage the input on the television. So I put that cap in there to filter the DC level out. I'm going to try using these three RCA jacks here. It's from a Radio Shack RF modulator. I'm hoping I can get away with using these two Phillips screws to mount these ports. But we'll have to see. Okay, so it looks like I can pull this circuit board or these ports right out now. I could be wrong, but it looks that way. 
Now, a tool that's great to have when you're trying to get components out that you've desoldered is a flat-headed screwdriver. Just put it in there, give it a little twist, not not too hard, just a little twist, and it should pop right out. So, there we go. A little bit of effort, and I found the perfect solution for my Atari modification slash repair. So I just need to do some measurements regarding the spacing and diameter of all of these jacks. Drill some holes in the back and we'll be good. All right, so I drilled the holes and I mounted the hardware. And, you know, it's not perfect, but it certainly is secure. And there's good continuity for all the connections. So video left and right and they're all nice and stable and I've also secured my little printed circuit board here so everything's ready to get closed up so I'm gonna go ahead and close the Atari and here it is completely reconstructed and ready for the 21st century it works perfectly on the television I tested it on. I do need to test it on a widescreen model television, but so far everything looks great. Alright, well, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions regarding anything I did, please let me know. Alright, so here's the schematic. I'm going to go over where the video in comes from, where the audio in comes from, and how you would connect your video out and your audio out to the RCA jacks. All right, this is where the audio in connects. So it is on this side of capacitor 210. So you can see it's connected right there. And for a more distant view, uh, this typically is all covered with an RF shield. So once you remove it, this is where the Atari cartridge would go. Anyway, so on the right here, you can see this is where the orange cable would attach. And that orange cable being audio in. And this is where I remove the transistor. You need to do that because that transistor mixes the audio signal in with the video signal. So you need to remove that in order to get an exclusive audio signal from the point that I showed you earlier. And again, here is a more distant view. So here's where the cartridge goes in, and this is where the transistor used to be. So you can clip that out, solder it out, whatever you choose to do. So that's where that transistor used to be. So that's the one you need to remove in order to prevent your audio from mixing with the video signal. And once you have removed the RF modulator from the circuit, you have five pins that the RF modulator was initially connected to. The three pins that you want to connect are ground. So the first pin here, that's ground. And then the third pin in is VCC. And then the fourth pin is the video in. So those are the three pins you want. So the green wire here is what connects to that schematic. So in the earlier clip, I showed you there was a red wire, a black wire, and a green wire. The red wire connects to that five volt potential at the top of the screen. And then the ground or the black wire is connected to that ground symbol there right below the R2 resistor there. And then the video in was the green connection. So that hopefully will explain things. And for the video out and the audio out, this is how you would connect it. So this green wire here is the video out. So if you look at the schematic from earlier, you'll understand what that is. That comes from that transistor, the 3904. And then the red wire here is the audio out. It connects to both the left and the right audio channels there. Now, you take the ground wire, which comes from that schematic that you saw earlier. There was a ground connection. So you take a black wire, or any other color you'd like, but black indicates ground in most circumstances, so you would probably want to use black. So black would connect to the ground connection for all of the RCA jacks. So if you're not familiar with RCA jacks, this is the ground point right here for all of the RCA jacks. So for the video, the audio, and the audio, that outside covering is the ground. And for the inside, 
There is metal on the inside of here. That would be where you would connect the video and the audio in the same audio right there. So hopefully all of that made sense. I really hope it does because this is a great hack. Allowing your Atari to come into the 21st century because now you can connect it to any television you like that has the composite connection. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions again, please let me know.